Malawi bloat. What is it and how do you prevent it? Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the condition and how I manage it. Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Zenzo from Tozawa Tanks. Now I'm, get, I'm making another video about African cichlids, but I thought this would be uh, very helpful for a lot of people that uh, might experience this or might have a lot of questions or don't know how to manage this condition, which is Malawi bloat. Now, first off, let's talk a little bit about what Malawi bloat looks like, because you may have seen it, but don't know what it is, or you may not know what it is at all. So Malawi bloat is not actually a disease, but more a condition of something going on with the fish where the fish will get bloated, distended in the belly. Um, some things that you might recognize or you might see on the fish would be a bloated abdomen where you think, God, is that fish like impacted or is it pregnant or egg bound or something like that? Some people would think those. So you'll see distended belly. Sometimes you might see the scales that are kind of popping out. So the, the scales aren't flush, but almost like a dropsy look where the scales are kind of sticking up off the body. You might see discoloration in the feces. It'll either be, uh, you know, light in color, pale, uh, translucent, etc., white. Um, you might see the fish being very lethargic, having difficulty breathing, st you know, staying on the bottom of the tank, not eating. Um, you might even see like around the uh, anal area where it's uh, like discolored or swollen. So these are all uh, possible symptoms of Malawi bloat. Now, what causes Malawi bloat? And this is something where there's differences of opinions or a little uncertainty as far as the hobby and what actually causes this condition. So we'll talk about some of those here. While there is no like real definitive conclusion on what causes bloat, there are some things that might be contributing to it or it might be an, uh, a combination of these factors, which we'll talk about. So one of them is bacterial. So there, there is a camp that believes that uh, the condition is a bacterial type of infection or something happening in the uh, internals of the fish where you know their digest digestive tract is getting irritated due to what they're eating or what they ate or something like that. And, um, there's bacteria that gets in there and is causing issues uh, with their ability to pass food. Um, so that's one uh, possibility. The other one that uh, often comes up is poor water quality. And I would say that this is probably, you know, could be like a combination of this with other things. Now, poor water quality would mean you have a fish that, or a tank that's full of fish and you don't do water changes very often. The water quality, you know, deteriorates and you got very high levels of, of nitrates where it's over 100 parts per million. Uh, you might have some ammonia buildup and things like that. So those can all cause um, stress in the fish and could, could potentially um, contribute to bloat or other things as well. Another uh, possibility that people have looked into and studied is uh, a parasite. So it might be where there's parasites that get into the intestinal tract of the fish and they occupy parts of the intestinals, intestines and uh, they will, you know, stay in the intestines, they'll multiply and create blockage in the intestinal tract and then the fish is not able to pass its feces and then becomes bloated and eventually passes on. So while those are all possibilities, the most common consensus is that it's based on the diet of the fish, uh, specifically with fish that are herbivores. So fish that, you know, primarily um, in, in nature would be eating plant material, algae, things like that. So like in Buna, Trophius, um, fish that really should be getting a higher fiber diet and getting vegetables and algae in their diet if they're fed uh, a higher uh, protein or higher fat-based foods, um, that could cause some issues with blockage in their intestinal tract, not being able to manage those type of foods, and thus they would get bloat. So um, those are all the different reasons why your fish may, may be getting bloat. Uh, it is very common to see in Ambuna and Trophius and other fish that are herbivores, which is why I tend to think that it's probably a diet-based reason, but some of those other factors may contribute as well. Now, if you see a fish with Malawi bloat, can it be cured? And that's a difficult answer. Uh, I would say yes and no. It really depends on how far along that fish is. If you've something that 
you catch early on and you say, ah, oh, that fish looks a little bit chubby or there's something going on, you might be able to address it with medications, an antibacterial medication. You could do some internal parasites uh, medications, obviously. I happen to use uh, Paracleanse for parasites and uh, Maricin for any type of bacterial in infections. Uh, Maricin is uh, the same um, active ingredient as erythromycin. Um, so those are a couple things that you could do if you see it early on. Now, if it's very late in the, in the case and that fish is laying around and not eating well and not passing waste and super bloated, it's probably not curable. And I'm not gonna say that it's not entirely, but it's probably unlikely that that fish is gonna recover from uh, those conditions if it gets that bad. Before I continue, let me pause right here and ask a big favor of all of you. Do me a big favor and hit that like button. It really does help my channel. And if you've made it this far, and if you like these types of videos, then consider subscribing and also hitting that notification bell. Now let's get back to the video. Now, how do you prevent Malawi bloat? And I think this is probably the easier thing to do versus treating it once you've seen it in the fish. I think the most important thing to do is to ensure that you are feeding your fish the proper diet based on the type of fish that you have. So if you do have Mbuna, if you do have Trophius, if you do have fish that are more herbivores, then make sure that you're feeding them the proper foods, making sure that you're giving them, um, you know, vegetables in their diet or seaweed in their diet. One of the things that I love to do is I have a lot of duckweed. Now I know people hate duckweed, but if you have African cichlids, it can be a wonderful thing to have. So if I have a tank with duckweed, I can just scoop a net and scoop up a bunch of duckweed, put it in my African cichlid tanks and even if it's like a full, like two handfuls of duckweed, I'll put that in a tank, I'll come back at the end of the day or the next morning and it's gone, they've eaten it all. So that is very helpful. Sometimes I'll feed like zucchini, um, I'll do spinach, uh, you know, other vegetables that um, I can easily blanch or put in the aquarium and uh, they'll eat them and it does uh, aid in their diet because it's making sure that they're getting the proper nutrition and the proper fibers that they need to um, keep their uh, intestines and everything moving uh, freely. So in addition to feeding vegetables and, uh, you know, feeding, you know, plant matter like duckweed, um, sometimes I'll even like find algae in other aquariums and I'll pull it or scrape it off and put it in my Mbuna tanks and they just eat it up. It's great. So uh, I do have algae issues in some of my tanks and usually it's like hair algae and I can just like take a little fork and swirl it up, put it in the, uh, in the Mbuna tank and they just chomp it up and it's great for them. So um, th those are things that you can do. Other things that you can do is ensure that when you are feeding a processed food, looking at the ingredients and looking at the protein content and the fat content and making sure that that food is proper for the fish that you're feeding um, and switch it up a little bit. So you might be feeding a, a pellet food, you know, a couple days a week. You might feed like a spirulina flake or something like that a couple days a week, which is what I like to do. And then supplement the other two or three days with vegetable matter, algae, etc. Something that I also like to do, and this is something that I've been doing for a long time now, is every once in a while I will feed my Mbuna uh, like krill or shrimp. So the reason why is one, it's a good protein source that's not high in fat. Um, they will eat and uh, find and eat uh, crustaceans and things like that in the wild in like Malawi. And uh, the other thing is that because they're eating the whole shrimp and the shell and everything, all the legs and all the hard bits of the shrimp or the krill, um, it's kind of like fibrous in nature. So it also is acting the same as like some vegetables would act where that the roughage essentially of the shrimp is passing through and helping to uh, keep the intestines and everything clean for the fish. So really, I don't think that Malawi bloat is something that you really need to worry about. Just make sure that you, you know, check your fish and make sure that you're observing them and seeing, is there anything going on with my fish where they look different or act different? Make sure that you're up on top of treat, you know, taking care of the water and doing lots of water changes and making sure that, you know, the water quality is optimal for the fish that you're keeping. And if you do, you know, get new fish, treat them for you know, possible parasites, look for possible bacterial infections and have those medications on hand so that if there is a situation or if you do want to quarantine your fish and medicate them, that you have those medications available to treat them right away and not letting it get really bad to where, you know, they get all distended and there's nothing that you can do for them. And then the last thing, as I share, just make sure that you feed them a varied diet. So, uh, you know, the more things that you can introduce and, and uh, give them a, a variation, the better it is for them. So again, a quality pellet food, a quality flake food, and then supplementing that with duckweed or, you know, other 
plant matter, vegetables, algae, seaweed. Like you can buy like seaweed sheets at the, at the grocery store and feed that to your fish. So these are all things that can really be really helpful for your Buna, your Trophius, other African cichlids, other cichlids that are um, more herbivores and could potentially get backed up by not having the proper diet. If you'd like to see more videos about African cichlids, I do have a playlist down below in the description that will take you to a bunch of different African cichlid videos that I've made about care and feeding and breeding and aggression and all that kind of stuff. So check that out. It is a helpful resource. And also check out the videos at the end of this one, at the end card, as uh, there will be some other relevant videos uh, to this one. That's all I had for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.